what's happening, y'all. That is a great standard session tune called Father Kelly's uh, Short Reel. Um, so hopefully not as many notes to get. And it's one that I just haven't got around to. But it came up at a session yesterday and I figured I'd bust it out. So let's break it down. As always, we will start out with the basic melody of the A part here. Again, it is a short reel, so hopefully you won't have too much to get. Uh, here's the first part here. first half of the A part. The second half is fairly repetitive, at least the beginning of it is, and it's just really the ending that's a little bit different. Uh, here's that. So again, just the back half of that second half. So the last quarter, I guess, is different. The second quarter and the fourth quarter are different. The first two are the same, so hopefully fewer notes to have to deal with. The B part jumps up into the second octave. Uh, as always, when it gets up high, be aware of your hearing and of that of your neighbors, so feel free to drop the octave if you want, although this one's a little bit tricky because it kind of bounces back and forth, so here we go. Again, first half there, second half, just like the A part, is repeat, or at least the beginning of it is. So here we go. So the B part kind of rounds off the same way that the A part does. So again. Repetition, fewer notes, all that good stuff. So let's talk about some of the details because with a short tune like this, um, you want to be able to vary it up a little bit and not play it exactly the same way each time because it does get kind of repetitive and a little bit boring. So it's good to be able to throw in a variety of different ornaments to change things up a little bit. A couple of quick ones there, sliding into the beginning of that A part. And then as I come off of that, go from B to A, I do that popping noise, that kind of earthquake ornament that I talk about a lot. Now you could start the whole phrase with a fairly advanced ornament. Don't necessarily have to, a slide works perfectly well, but you may have noticed that I started off the tune. That little flick kind of a move there. It's a bagpipe ornament, but I'm going. And if you do it quick, Do a long roll there or either way your short roll has an effect of sort of a like a punctuation mark like a period at the end of a sentence it's a little bit more blunt whereas the roll has a bit of a lift to it so you kind of change it up either way nothing really i'm doing there except going that that b to a crossing line And then as I come back down, I'll double tap that F sharp. It's subtle, not a requirement, but it's a nice little thing to throw in there. And then sliding back into it to turn the repeat around when we come back to it. So that last phrase. A um, couple of things you could do. You could do a uh, triplet into it. You could do two triplets. You could do a cran do a crayon followed by a triplet. So a lot of different ways to play that. And then I'll almost always cut that high G. Um, you've heard me say that a hundred times, probably the highest note in the phrase, highest note in the part so far. And then nothing there just except a slide uh, to land the phrase. Not really a whole lot to it, just sort of landing on that extra F sharp and sliding off it to finish it up. The B part has a lot of options for both triplets and crans because you're starting on that high D, you're, you're spending a bit of time there. All right, so that's an option. You could do a triplet or a cran like that. I'm still going to cut that high G. Again, highest note in the phrase. I like to really punch that. As you come back to that D, I'll almost always do a cran on that. Nothing else there except, again, accenting that high G, and then as I go to the second phrase here, we go to a, an E minor chord as opposed to the D major chord we were sort of starting with. Uh, not really E minor, it's sort of a E with a four in it. 
I don't know, whatever you call that. <laughs> Sliding into it, and that's the point. <laughs> and I'll do a short roll to, to break up those notes. <laughs> Could cran an E? I'm not a big fan of crans on E's. I don't know, personal preference. <laughs> Sliding into the highest note now, which is an A, high A. <laughs> uh, You could cut it, um, I've mentioned this a few times as well, the higher notes, the G, the A, and the high B, run a little bit bigger risk of breaking if you're trying to crack, uh, if you're trying to do a, a cut on that note, which is why the slide is a little bit of a safer option. And I will also almost always tongue that note, uh, shorting it, shortening it up a bit. Um, Same phrase there, either alternating between triplets and crans, mixing and matching as you see fit. And then the only thing I'm doing there is popping that B to A transition, which I've talked about at least three times in this video so far. And then we run back around to the A part for the turnaround. So again, sliding back into that, kind of completing the circle. So. Quick and dirty, let me know what y'all think of this tune. It's a great standard one. Hopefully you've got it, and maybe you can pick up a few new things to do with it. Hopefully. <laughs> let me know what y'all think. I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers.